Welcome to Tiger King's YouTube channel. Following how to fabricate a staircase last week, I will show you how to build handrails. Today's focus is on two things. One, taking off 90 degree elbow fitting to make any degree elbow. Two, how to prevent the handrails from being warped after welding. Let's take a look at the drawing first. The handrail inside angle is 125 degree and the other is 55 degree. I have to use elbow fittings to achieve this angle. For our basic understanding, let's look at the following picture. This is a 90 degree elbow. If you attach pipes to both sides, the inside angle will also be 90 degree. How about 45 degree elbow? Unlike 90 degree elbow, the inside angle will be 135, not 45 degree. I have to make 125 degree and 55 degree. What size elbow should I use? Here is a simple formula. If the inside angle is greater than 90 degree, the custom elbow angle is 180 degree minus inside angle. Let me calculate the elbow which I need. 180 minus 125 inside angle is 55. So I need a 55 degree elbow to make 125 degree inside angle. The other side is 55 degree. As you see, you have to use two elbows to make the inside angle smaller than 90 degree. You have to attach 90 degree elbow to a small angle one. The formula is as follows. The elbow angle is 90 degree minus inside angle. Let me calculate the elbow which I need. 90 degree minus inside angle 55 is 35. So I, if I attach 35 elbow to 90 degree one, I can make 55 degree inside elbow fitting. Now I'm ready, but there is another problem. The most standard elbow in the market is 90 and 45 elbow. 55 and 35 elbow are special. You cannot buy it from a supplier. Maybe you can do a special order, but it will be very expensive and take a long time to get it. What should I do? Take off 90 degree elbow to any degree. Taking off an elbow is a crucial skill for pipe welders and welder fitters. Please let me show you how to take off a 90 degree elbow into 55 degree and 35 degree. Make X axis and Y axis lines on the table or the paper. If you have an angle finder, use it. It is easy. Don't worry if you don't have it. We can calculate. Mark a point on the X axis anywhere. I marked 3.5 inch. Here is the formula for dividing a quadrant at 55 degree. 10, 55 degree, multiply 3.5 is 4.99. Round up to 5. Mark a point at 3.5 x axis and 5 y axis on the quadrant and draw a line connecting the origin point. This will divide the quadrant into 55 degrees and 35 degrees. Next, place the elbow on the laid out line. Both ends of the elbow should be aligned with the X and Y axis and straight. Lay a square along the diagonal line and mark the elbow outside. Next, Mark inside. To mark the top and bottom of the elbow, I place the steel ruler on the top of the elbow. Align each edge to the diagonal line using eyeballs and mark on the elbow. 
I connect these marks using a zip tie. You can use other things if you think it is better to use. Rubber band or o-ring can be a substitute. Next is cut it along the line. I use a grinder without a safeguard. This is completely wrong. Please do not use a grinder if it doesn't have a safeguard. Let me double check the angle of the elbow after cutting. It looks good enough. The most important parts are ready to build handrails. The rest of job is to cut the pipes and fit up with the taken off elbows. It is not very difficult, so I will skip this procedure. One of the biggest challenges when making a platform, a staircase, and handrails are deformation caused by the welding. In particular, a staircase and handrails are high traffic, so it's crucial to keep them straight after welding. I believe a truly skilled welder is someone who anticipates deformation and takes steps to minimize it. In my case, I use the following two jigs. Using U-shaped pipe clamps is easy to make and very effective. This is not my idea, but of my former co-workers. The other jig is different, but the basic principle is the same. These jigs supply a lot of stress to the opposite side of the weld to cause some reverse deformation. Look at the between the jig and the pipe. I inserted a 1 8 thickness plate to give more stress and reverse deformation. After welding, let it cool completely before taking apart the jig. Now let's see if it's straight or not. As you can see, it's almost perfectly straight. What if you just weld without any jig which prevents warping? As you can see, it becomes a banana. It looks bad and hard to fix after welding. This is the difference between good welders and so-so welders. This is all I have prepared for today. Thanks for watching and see you next time.